Paper piecing can seem intimidating the first time you try it, but it's one of the best ways to get perfectly pieced blocks. Welcome to Evita Studio. My name is Elizabeth and I help you make beautiful things with quilting, pajagi, and embroidery. So paper piecing can strike fear and anxiety into the hearts of some quilters because it's a little bit different way of piecing. But once you understand the basic principles for how to do paper piecing, you can get amazing results. Now, if you're just getting started with paper piecing, I recommend starting with a simple project. Now, a great project to start with is the Flying Birds Quilt Block. And I have this pattern that I drafted myself on graph paper. If you want to see how to do that, you can check out the full tutorial for the Flying Birds Block and I show how to draft this. But you use the same principles for any type of paper piecing. So even though this is my sample block, you would do any other block in the same way. Now, when you cut your pieces for paper piecing, you need your pieces to be bigger than what you would normally cut. So for example, this piece number one, that is going to be a three inch half square triangle. So we know that would be three and a half inches, but you don't want to cut three and a half inches on the diagonal. Cut it a little bit bigger so that you have more to work with because you are going to be stitching and then trimming down. And then the more odd shaped or odd angles you have, then it's nice to give even a bit bigger to work with. With straight lines and 45 degree angles, it's usually pretty predictable, but when you get into different um, angles, then it's good to have even a little extra. It's really frustrating if you put a piece on and then press it back and find out it's a bit too small. So with paper piecing, we're gonna be having our fabric on the back of the paper. So I'm gonna line up my fabric and wrong sides onto the paper and I'm going to put this behind the number one triangle and I want to make sure that it extends at least a quarter of an inch past all the edges and so a little trick I like to do is I'll hold it up to the light just to make sure and I say yes that is in the right spot. So to hold that in the right spot you can either pin it onto the paper or you can even put a little just a dab of glue from a glue stick just to hold it in place while you sew your first seam. And then, then when that's, when that's in place, then you're gonna line up for the second piece. So that's in this block, that's piece number two, that is this half square triangle. Now on your, on your pattern, your pieces are probably labeled one, two, three, et cetera, so you know what's coming next. So then we're going to put those pieces right sides together and then we're going to stitch along this stitching line. I'm just going to put a little pin to hold that in place while I stitch it. So there you can see I stitched right on that line just from end to end. And on the back we can see my seam allowance is slightly bigger than a quarter of an inch. So if I want I could fold that back and then trim that to get it down to exactly a quarter of an inch but it's close enough so I think I'm going to leave it. One tip when you're stitching is make your stitch length a little bit shorter because that'll make it easier to take out the paper. So after it's stitched, we're gonna fold that back and then you can press with an iron or a seam roller to help that stay in place. Now we're gonna go on to piece number three. So piece number three, we can see is another half square triangle and it's going on on this angle. So again, to help line up everything, I can hold it up to the light to see that everything's lined up where it's supposed to go. So now that stitching's done. So I'll fold the paper back and this time I am gonna trim the seam allowance because this is pretty big on that side. So I'm gonna trim this to a quarter of an inch. And of course, it could be slightly smaller or slightly wider. In this case, we're not worried about an exact quarter inch seam allowance 
because our seam is already stitched. We're not using our seam allowance to get the size of our finished piece. So I'm gonna fold that back and I'll press that with the seam roller. And then I'm gonna add the last triangle, which will be this way. So I'm gonna add it onto there. If you're having trouble lining up your piece, then one thing you can do is you can fold your paper and then trim the seam allowances before you um, stitch. So I can see this is where my seam is going to be. So I could trim this piece now. And that's going to give me an edge to line up with. So that's personal preference if you want to do that. But if you're having trouble seeing how to line up your pieces, then that's a good option. So now I know this piece is going to go here so I can line it up that way. So now that's stitched. I will fold that back and press that. And so there we can already start to see the benefit of paper piecing because we have this perfect blue triangle there. And now just before we add our last big triangle, I am going to take this to the iron to press because although this, the seam roller does a pretty good job, I just want that to be extra flat before I add my last piece. So now that's super flat, I'm just going to add this triangle onto here. And just before I trim everything, I'm going to fold it back and double check to make sure that I have enough in the seam allowances. And yes, I do. So I will trim that. If I needed to adjust it, I could just take that seam out and stitch it again. So now I'll fold back that last triangle and I'm going to take that to the ironing board to press it. So that's looking good. Now I'm just going to use my paper to trim the final trim down and remember to trim with the seam allowance. So it's going to be six and a half inches square after I've trimmed it. So now that it's trimmed, it's just the size we want. Now we're going to remove the paper. Now I, now I know there are some paper piecing techniques where you don't stitch through the paper. You just use your paper and then you can reuse it. You don't have to rip it out. But if you're just getting started with paper piecing, then I recommend this method where you do stitch right through the paper and you have the exact line that you follow. And because we've stitched on the lines, the paper is really perforated and so that makes it super easy to remove. So once the paper is removed, we can use this as a normal quilting piece. Now if you're making a lot of paper piece blocks, then you might want to leave the paper in until they've all been assembled and joined together. And that way you don't have to worry about seam allowances at all. It's a lot of paper to remove at the end, but that's a good activity to do for when you're watching a movie or something else. So for paper piecing, you have to think a little bit differently because you're thinking of the back and the front, but once you get the hang of it, it gives you perfect results. For more, quilting tutorials and inspiration, be sure to check out ebitastudio.com.